Hi, and thank you. Welcome uh, to the Human Relations Commission, City of Asheville. Uh, my name is Tanya Rodriguez. I'm your chair uh, this evening. Um, would like to um, hold off for a couple of more moments until uh, more commissioners come in. And so we'll just um, uh, wait for a couple of more minutes until uh, more people uh, show up. Thank you. Just uh, waiting on uh, Vice Chair Oliver uh, to come back, um, begin uh, 5.35. Uh, Right. How's everybody doing tonight? So far, so good. It's good to see everybody's faces. Um, I'd like to open up the meeting with a, a call to order uh, with the land acknowledgement of the sacred Cherokee land that we are all um, occupying at this time. Um, I'd like to welcome our members, uh, Vice Chair uh, Brandon Oliver. Hello. Are you here? <laughs> Can you hear me? Can hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hope you all doing well. Commissioner Tiffany Flurney Devolo. Uh, Hello, here. 
Thank you. Commissioner Davidson Jones. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Dolores Venable. Present. It looks like Ivan, uh, Commissioner Ivan Melkor isn't here yet. Commissioner Chris Weinbrenner. Looks like Chris Weinbrenner's audio is catching up with the video. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Commissioner Melanie Noyes. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Veronica Coit. Present. Thank you. Commis Commissioner Susie Chandler. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Will Overfelt. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, doesn't look like Commissioner Alfred Green is here. Um, we have a new commissioner, Emma Nicole Worthy. Doesn't seem like um, Commissioner Worthy is in here. Um, and we have Councilwoman Kim Rooney. Good evening. Thank you. We have our uh, staff, uh, staff liaison, Richard White. Good evening. Thank you very much. Um, welcome to all of you that are here, staff and the public that are watching. Uh, the purpose, I'd like to introduce uh, the mission of the HRCA. The purpose of the Human Relations Commission of Asheville is to promote and improve human relations and to achieve equity among all citizens in the city by carrying out the city's human relations program. The HRCA will prioritize racial equity and will work with city government and partner with communities and outside agencies in an effort to encourage and ensure diversity, fairness, equity, and inclusion throughout the city. In furtherance thereof, the HRCA should endeavor to identify and assist in addressing all forms of individual, institutional, and community discrimination through education, advocacy, and policy recommendations. Um, this is a, 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 in our call to order, we kind of revamped this agenda from previous agendas and um, would like to uh, have a, a consensus on uh, the review of the agenda. Has any, everybody had a chance to check out the new agenda and what you, how do you, uh, how did it land with you? I've not had a chance to look at it yet. Is there any way um, that we can bring up the agenda as a screen share? Um, yes, I can share that for you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And um, I'd encourage maybe to um, <clears throat> use your uh, phone in conjunction with the meeting to check out the agenda as well. Oh, thank you, Christina. Much appreciated. Please let me know if I need to make um, any of the text bigger. Okay. How does that look to everybody? Do we need to have that zoomed in a little bit? A little bit would be good. Yeah, I think so. 
Um, I have one issue. Can my name be spelled correctly, please? My oh, name is sure. D E capital L O R E S. Okay, apologies on that. We will definitely fix that. Thank you. All right, can you scroll up for us, Christina, um, just so that we can have a look at the agenda? So we have our call to order, um, the new business, uh, the working group updates, um, and uh, staff updates, unfinished business, future agenda items. Uh, community announcements and uh, public comment, um, a live public comment I would like to maybe invite for us to do next meeting, um, and then adjournment. What we did add are uh, documents that relate to the Human Relations Commission that can be found online that are easily linked to um, there. And then on the very bottom of the uh, agenda, our, our recommendations, we have three recommendations on the table, uh, this particular uh, Human Relations uh, Commission meeting. So I'd encourage all of you to maybe open up your phone and go to uh, your email or the documents so that you can um, also have the agenda in front of you if that's possible. Uh, how does it, how does this land with everybody? Is everybody approve of this? Does this feel good for you? I like that you added those links, and I think that's really helpful. Thank you. That was uh, Councilwoman Rooney's uh, suggestion. So Councilwoman Rooney uh, Rooney walked with us, uh, Brandon, uh, Commissioner Oliver, and I. Uh, together to, to create an agenda that is um, open to the public and transparent and then for us uh, to really <laughs> hone in on the things that we're, we're here to do. Um, Commissioner uh, Tiffany Flurney Debelo. I was just wondering, is the, line, is the live stream up and running now? Because I, I don't see it. I was going to try to send a link to a group. Uh, yes, the live stream uh, is, there's a link in the comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Overvelt. Much appreciate your feedback. Um, uh, Christina, can we get the full room back again, please? If there's no further questions, and then maybe get a show of hands of uh, approval for this uh, new style of agenda. Um, Can I ask a question? Please. Um, I'm cool with this as a, a group because we do have the availability, obviously, as a group to be able to um, operate in this capacity. But um, I also am concerned because I do know that uh, social media or social uh, uh, constructs like cell phones, uh, uh, Wi-Fi and things aren't available to everyone. You know, that is a privilege. So I would just like to say that going forward, I do like the way the agenda looks. It looks great. But I do want to be able to have a way that people can also um, address our boards that don't have these uh, capabilities. <clears throat> The reason why I'm saying this is because someone asked me, like, what other way can we contact your board outside of um, the, you know, the Internet, basically. So that's what I'm asking. Thank you. Right. Yep. Thank you, um, Commissioner Venable. One of the things um, that we wanted to bring in um, was in the unfinished business was to potentially discuss or vote on a, a potential uh, meeting time change to two hours where we can discuss what public comment looks like for us. So what does that look like? How can we have access for public comment to us and, and establish it right now together um, 
as a group. Uh, so so I, I hear you and I appreciate that because it is important that we open up all pathways of communication from uh, the community of Asheville uh, to us, being that we are the conduit from the community to uh, uh, city government and the city of Asheville. So I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Um, so it's... Is everybody uh, agree? It looks like everybody, uh, we've got quorum on that. So we'll go ahead and implement this and use this as a template for further meetings. Thank you. Um, uh, how about the uh, April 2021 minutes? Has Point of order, Chair, do you mind if we go ahead and um, adopt the agenda with a motion and second and a roll call vote so it's official? Thank you very much. Absolutely. Uh, motion to adopt the agenda. I second. Uh, motion. Approved. So moved. So moved. <laughs> so moved. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That sounds fabulous. And how about uh, the April 2021 agenda? Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Rooney. You would still need a um, roll call vote on oh. that. Oh, do we need the? We still. Oh, right, because the online rules. Right. Uh, roll call vote on the agenda to agenda approval. Uh, um, Commissioner Venable. Approved. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Tiffany Flurney Double O. Approved. Commissioner Overfelt. Approved. Commissioner Chandler. Approved. Commissioner Noyes. Approved. Commissioner Jones. Approved. Commissioner uh, uh, Weinbrenner. Approved. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Coit. Approved. Vice Chair Oliver. Approved. Wonderful. That was a unanimous vote. Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much, all of you. Um, so moving on to uh, April 2021 minutes. Uh, did, oh, where are we with our person that is taking uh, minutes? I am taking minutes right now, although I still need a little bit of instruction um, on that, but I'm doing my best and I do have the ones from April 21st available. Oh, wonderful. Is there um, possibly, uh, Councilwoman Rooney, can we put those minutes up in the documents and um, bring them in for approval for our next meeting in June? Yes, and you could um, link to both the April and May minutes for the next meeting. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right, moving on to, thank you very much, um, Commissioner Noyes. Moving on to new business. Um, since we're at a place in our commission where we're moving forward in really big ways, one of the things that has come up in conversation was the need for a secretary. And one of the names that came up for secretary because uh, Commissioner Noyes is already involved with doing minutes and um, and doing a lot of work with uh, keeping track of the what's happening with the HRCA. I would like to invite uh, uh, the electing or the appointing of uh, Commissioner Noyes to secretary. Um, and I would like to uh, make a motion to appoint uh, Commissioner Noyes to secretary uh, of the HRCA. So um, can I get a second on that? Second. 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 Thank you very much. And um, let's uh, do a roll call. Commissioner Venable. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner... Overfelt. Yes. Commissioner Chandler. Yes. 
Yes. Commissioner Noyes. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Weinbrenner. Yes, and I'll note that I believe this is the first time that we've been able to pull the minutes onto the shoulders of the actual commission. Before it was always the Office of Equity and Inclusion staff helping us. So I think this is a proud moment and a movement a moment moving forward for the commission. Thank you, Commissioner Weinbrenner. Commissioner Coit. Yes. Vice Chair Oliver. Yes. A unanimous. Wonderful. Welcome. Uh, Welcome Thank you very much, Secretary Noyes. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much for stepping up to lead um, that position in service. We appreciate you for um, opening up yourself for for uh, to to be in that position. So thank you. Uh, moving on to uh, our second um, item in new business, uh, HRCA to consider inviting a representative from the fairly newly formed Asheville Police Department Community Engagement Division to present to us uh, what's going on with that community engagement and how we can be involved with that community engagement. Um, so uh, this is an item brought in by Commissioner Weinbrenner. So I'd like to invite Commissioner Weinbrenner to further uh, explore this particular item. On yeah, I'll be glad to. Um, in response to community um, reactions, <clears throat> um, the police, the Asheville Police Department has has formed the Community Engagement Division, works alongside community partners to address complex societal issues such as homelessness, mental health, and substance use disorder. Uh, the division works with businesses, schools, neighborhoods, and communities to provide a non-traditional problem-solving of crime and related issues. And all of this is what I'm quoting from an article from Polly McDaniel from the Citizen Times. This group was just formed um, by the APD in December. And I thought with the work that we are chartered to do, it would be interesting to have someone from that department report out to us on what they are doing to engage the, the community. Because one of our mandates, of course, is to engage the community and we're developing methods, we're developing sources um, one thing that keeps coming up in our discussions is public safety and policing. And I feel that it would be a tool in our belt to at least know what the APD is offering up as community engagement. That is the reason for my bringing this. Thank you very much, Commissioner Weinbrenner. Uh, would you would we like to open that up for discussion? Uh, does anybody have? Um, May I? Please. Um, I, I I do like the way this is going forward. I do, however, would like to know because we made a resolution as a board, and it took a year and a half, almost two years. Uh, about CPAC and um, what is going on with CPAC because we had uh, basically made a, a vote as a board to absorb some of CPAC's issues and I'm concerned about A, what is going on with CPAC, B, are they having meetings still, three, is this board still um, a, a board that is recognized by city council, three, is it being, four, is it being dissolved Five, um, how do we bring those folks, if they are into play, 
into this conversation because I feel like, you know, part of the, the resolution that we we voted upon was that we would not absorb CPAC's um, full brunt. What we would do is step in into equitable spaces that they um, particularly did not have the full uh, ability to be equitable, inclusion, um, and human relatable to. So I would like to kind of like figure out as a board, like, how we're going to kind of work that out. I know we have paperwork on it, but, you know, if we're going to jump into this water, I'd like to know, like, exactly where CPAC is standing on all of this. Thank you. Um, we actually do have a line on that. Thank you, um, Commissioner Venable, uh, in Unfinished Business. If you look at the agenda and you'll see item number two, three, four is, uh, does address um, the discussion and vote options for a memorandum of understanding with CPAC uh, to either get in motion or off the table so that we can uh, review and discuss our relationship with CPAC um, at that time. So I hear you and thank you for bringing it up and it is on the agenda. And so um, I'd like to invite a point of order to go back Chair to Chair Rodriguez. Um, Commissioner Weinbrenner's. Um, uh, Chair new Rodriguez. Business. Please. Yeah, if I could, if I could just say this, I think Dolores brings up a good point, and us trying to figure out the whole policing issue. So I may, um, I would just like to table, um, to table this this um, issue, and maybe have it put to future agenda items, and that will allow you to work through the agenda and address uh, the issue do that or can we do that may i have an opportunity to respond to um commissioner weinberger please and i do kind of agree with what chris is going because this is something that our board had worked on for it took a long time to even get to that vote and i don't think we fully have the encompass so i i would also agree with where chris is going like i i would like to if we can like kind of put that motion to the side until our board has a full understanding because i don't even know what's going i don't think a lot of us know what's going on with cpac right now and that's where we came from you know absorbing some of that issue and i just like to have a better construction before we kind of dive off into some things that we might not be aware of that's going on all together. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Weinbrenner and Commissioner Venable. Uh, as I shared before, uh, that discussion is on our agenda today. Um, so uh, if we can... Um, complete this part and then when we get there we can really dive in uh, into that discussion and uh, try to figure out what's going on because that is in our unfinished business and so um, and I'm I'm in agreement with both of you you know so can we can we just move this whole thing to future agenda items and go on with the next part of the agenda, which would be the working updates. Absolutely. Thank you, Commissioner Weinbrenner. Um, do we need a roll call for uh, to put this on the future yeah, we have agenda? To put this item? We have to vote for that. I got a no and I got a we have to vote. So, well, Christian, are you making a motion? Yeah, since you approved your agenda, if you're going to change it, you probably want to vote to move something since you voted on it to begin with. All right. Um, I would like to maybe table this for right now until we get to that point in the agenda, and then maybe we can go from there. I think that that may be a good idea. Um, moving on. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Wembrenner. Moving on to working group updates. Uh, we've got a few working groups 
in action right now. Uh, we've got a houseless uh, working group um, led by Commissioner Chandler. And I would like to invite uh, Commissioner Chandler at this time uh, to the floor to share about updates and findings with the houseless working group. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thanks everyone for uh, your support and patience while we're working uh, through uh, the various interviews. The, the updates from last month, uh, we had one final interview with uh, Homeward Bound um, between this meeting and last month's meeting around the issues of, of the houseless encampments and uh, how we might move forward um, as, as, a, as a recommendation for the city council. And in between that time, um, the CDC order to, uh, to allow uh, the houseless population to shelter in place um, was lifted for Asheville and those encampments were removed. Um, if you'll recall, this came about about that February 1st incident where um, there was a misunderstanding between the Department of Transportation removing a bridge encampment uh, on the coldest day that we had this year. And so we have um, coming from that and working through um, the, the interviews that we've had with the, the different stakeholders um, uh, across the spectrum, uh, what we have are two recommendations for the the city uh, city council. One about um, um, the camping ordinance and removing the camping ordinance so that it is uh, no longer um, illegal to camp, and then providing support. There are federal housing dollars, and there are also um, COVID relief funds that are earmarked for houseless populations. One of the key issues that our city officials, like Kathy Ball, the assistant manager, are saying is that it's a safety issue. Um, and uh, the encampments are a safety issue to each other. So in redirecting some of those policing funds into um, chasing uh, houseless campers around and ticketing them to doing things like providing sanitation and, um, you know, basic protection and checks and things like that. Um, so there's that particular uh, recommendation to the city council. And then a second one that is more immediate uh, since we do have some warmer weather coming up that ad addresses inclement weather with the idea that the council could implement that immediately while it works out how it would manage um, sourcing those funds uh, into making those encampments, uh, making houseless encampments safe for the residents who um, shelter there. Do, at this point, do um, do we open for questions or um, uh, or review of the? I, I shared the um, the I shared the recommendation with you all in advance, so you'd have a chance to look at it. Um, and if you if there were any questions or suggestions, um, this seems like a great time. I do have a question. Yes, ma'am. I do. Have, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Dolores. I, I don't know this approach. The Google meets too well, so I don't know how to raise my hand and be called. I'm so sorry, so I don't mean to cut people off. I really don't. You're okay. Go right ahead. Okay. So my question is, um, and it's a two-part question. One is to the com committee that worked on this. It is great work. And I also have a question for our council liaison, um, Councilman Maroney, Councilwoman Maroney. The two parts that I would like to ask is this. So I do get the gist of this um, resolution. And I would like to know if this resolution was written before city council um, had a chance last Tuesday um, to uh, proliferate what they voted upon. And I would like for our board to also know from our council li liaison exactly what that entailed as far as council and how does this resolution kind of, does it, is it not rep I don't want to say repetitive because I don't like that word so much because I think it can be kind of offensive in certain aspects. And I know that when people work, it's not repetitive. You, you just do the work that you need to do at the time. But I just want to make sure that we are sending a, a recommendation that has not already been voted upon and is bigger than what our board had even thought about when we made the initial recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Dolores. Um, that was written, 
written before Tuesday. Uh, we circulated it a little bit with the uh, having the attorney check check it and Councilwoman Roney check it um, as well. I'm not sure what happened on Tuesday. Can somebody enlighten me? I do know that council passed ten million dollars to be given to the homeless initiative. There were some issues with some other clauses causes where there was some closed door discussions where Gwen Whistler had issues with, especially when talking about um, putting the city at a place to be um, basically building homeless shelters because that would put the city in a place where it would be a business entity where real estate developers could come in and be able to seize the moment as well. And so I would, I think Ms. Roney would be best, um, you know, uh, able to answer this question because she was there for the vote and that was something that was passed on Tuesday. So I would like our board to maybe get a little bit more clarity on that if we could, if that, I, I, and I think this commit, that working group might need to hear that as well. I, I don't know if the, that's what I'm saying. So as far as the timeline, I'm hearing I'm that this um, language was drafted before the last council meeting. Um, and that these are policy recommendations, not necessarily funding recommendations. Am I understanding that from the working group? Yes, the, there. Um, I, I was aware of the funding. I didn't associate it with last Tuesday's meeting. Thank you for that, Dolores. Um, but yes, the the recommendations are around ordinances that are in place. Uh, and supporting it through uh, some funding that's come available with, with those encampments. As, as far as addressing um, the larger, much larger than the scope of what we had put out there, we haven't considered that yet. Um, we were mostly ma making a reaction to um, a, a policy reaction policy re change request as a reaction to that February 1st um, incident with with the with the eye on the upcoming weather that's going to get extreme the other way with heat instead of cold does that make sense to answer your question Dolores that they're they're supporting each other um I kind of do see where they can uh cross the the, the, the metrics of both um I guess what I just don't want our board to, to do is to like uh, recommend something with a time frame where there's been more monies given to this issue ever before by council with initiatives behind the lines because it seemed as though that council had some other um, initiatives that pushed them to be able to give that type of funding that had programs, other things, you know, the days in, the city is now, you know, people are buying the days in for that issue. So I just wanted to make sure that we weren't kind of like um, being repetitive in something that already, and like I said, it was great work. And, I, and like you say, it was kind of reactionary to one thing, but I want to know how did, does that, that, com, that working group feel uh, with the present um, situation now that council has made a vote? Mm -hmm. And does that in, uh, affect how that uh, recommendation works? Melanie, do you want to you add to that? Yeah, I would. That's a really good question. Um, and yeah, I appreciate you making sure that funding is going to all areas of the city that's needed. Um, I think that with this recommendation, it's not changing um, any funding that the city has already gotten or where it's flowing. Um, it's money that was already there. Um, we're just saying that instead of using it to remove people to provide sanitation. Um, and this is something that is pretty important and not, not repetitive at all to do right now um, because some of the money that was given to the city um, to take care of our houseless, houseless folks um, was used to put people in hotels. And so that funding and that money and that, that program ends at the end of June. So by June 30th, all those people that were put in those hotels have to leave. And actually, um, so there are 60 people at the Red Roof Inn, and then there are 120 people who are at other hotels right now that are going to be asked to leave by the end of June. So um, when Commissioner Chandler asked if anybody had questions or recommendations, um, I did want to shorten that timeline of the 60 days that was on the, um, the recommendation to the end of June. 
where people will be leaving those hotels with nowhere to go. Um, and I just wanted to follow up and add with that, that it's really important for um, the nonprofits in the city and mutual aid groups um, to be able to find our houseless uh, neighbors um, in order to um, provide them with, with help and aid. Um, and that's the sanitation thing is important too for health reasons. Um, and because if uh, basic sanitation basic sanitation is not met, that leads to our folks um, using emergency services more. So, um, yeah, that's that's all I have. I hope that answers your question and um, paints a more clear picture. It kind of does. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, of and course. I appreciate your response. My. My other question is, it is to my understanding that these people will not be displaced uh, at that date due to the fact that these monies have been put into place in order to not have displacement. So I also would like to know, um, is that resolution part of that too? Because it is to my understanding, I, I think Ms. Roney might be able to question and, and more fertility fru since she uh, was part of that vote and the conversation that happened behind some closed doors that this is not something, these people will not be, you know, folks who are houseless and there's more room to homelessness than homeless. So um, I think that part of that discussion with city council was that folks would not be displaced past a certain date because that date came into play before a vote. Um, I'm happy to uh, get some more clarification from staff, if, Richard, if you'd like to jump in here. But it's my understanding um, that the funds that were voted on at the last council meeting were for the contract, which ends at the end of June. Now, the closed session is still a closed session matter. Yes. <sighs> We'll get clarification on the June 30th date, what happens beyond that, um, and provide that back to the commission. My uh, raised I, hand isn't go. working. Can I ask a question? Please, uh, uh, Commissioner Weinbrenner. Thank you. Um, Susie, is basically what your, your work group wanting us to do this evening is to um, remove the ordinances that have listed um, city code chapter two, uh, chapter 12, article three, section 12 through 51 and 12 through 52. Um, that's, where, that's where you're going with this, is that right? Yes, that was a recommendation by the um, police captain was to remove the camping ordinance. So they wouldn't have to take it. Um, I, I, I did want to take one one more step back to Commissioner Venable's question about these concurrent running things. Um, while uh, you know the city's aim is to, and our you know aim as a as a working group is to do what we can to end homelessness. There will always be some houseless people um, who. Either the the idea of the low barrier entries, where uh, entry shelters where people don't have to take a breathalyzer or a drug test or provide ID, um, those are available now. Um, but there will there will always be people who are either car camping or um, basically sleeping on the ground. Uh, if if even if all the funding that we need is available, so what this um would back to answer uh commissioner chris's question uh what this is doing is r removing the crime around not having a place to lay down um th so that th because it's not going to be possible to ticket our way out of this situation um as commissioner noya said that our our best um, way to service these individuals and to be equitable for the whole city is to be able to contact houses people with resources to know where they are um and have residences or homes, homes for them, even if they're in, in tents and parks, um, so that they are accessible for uh, for services, for that things that um, Homer Bound does, things that Beloved Asheville does, um, for uh, psych psychological services, things like that. But having a location that is um, okay for them to be in is, is a really important piece of that. So yes, this recommendation uh, is to to remove the camping, the no camping ordinance 
uh, for the city and city parks, of course, not on private property, uh, but within city property so that the houseless community has a safe place to be to receive those services. Thank you. Commissioner Coit, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Coit, would you like to uh, respond? Uh, yeah, I was just, I went into uh, the notes and actually found that we have some public comment. Uh, we had six emails and they were all actually pertaining to this issue. And I didn't know if everybody had a chance to read them or if we should read them aloud. Uh, we do have them about, and it is, uh, they are all specifically about this issue too. That seems pertinent. What do we do? When when did the emails come in? Um, let's. Uh, none of them have dates, but they are part of our documents. If you go to the Human Relations Commission page on uh, Asheville Gov website and go over to documents, they are there under um, under Can our documents at, as public comment. Is there any way to get those emails sent to our board? Thank you, Veronica, for that. And I'm sorry to interrupt again because that's alarming to me too because we all need to know what we're saying so that we can be able to have the best, um, not reaction, but response as a board. So, as a I think we all already actually have access to these. I went in to share and uh, we are, I believe we are all, hang on, Human Relations Commission. Okay, no, we're not all there. I apologize, um, but I can share that really quick if everybody wants me to email yes, them or I'm also comfortable to read them. Uh, I, I would defer them? to you, uh, Commissioner Chandler. Um, it, if everyone else is comfortable with the volume and the arrangement, just reading them seems fine. Commissioner Young? Uh, yes, I got a few questions to ask about this. Uh, so, the thing is, we helping the homeless people, right? In Asheville, uh, black men that got felonies, we can't even get in the house. And most of these homeless people has felonies, or child molesters, or whatever else, and Asheville is jumping through the hoops to help them. But you got people that's been here all their life, can't even get help from housing. And y'all want to help them out, and y'all want to help the people that's in your own community. Half of these people that's homeless... It's from Asheville inviting them to come in so y'all can get funding to help them. But y'all can't even help us. That don't make sense. I'd like to mm. respond if that's okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. go ahead. Try it. Yeah, um, I really appreciate you saying that because it's something that I, I do feel like, as, as a Latinx person, um, not that that is any way comparable, um, I feel like it is overlooked, but um, I have uh, started working at a nonprofit that works with this population. And um, from what I can see, it also is a racial equity issue, um, helping this particular population. It's disproportionately black and brown folks um, that live here, that have lived here for a long time. Um, and so helping these folks that are at the bottom, I feel like does lift our community from the bottom in that way. And you're totally right about the housing barriers. Um, it's incredible uh, how many people are denied housing for their criminal background um, when, as we know, black and brown people are disproportionately targeted by the cops. So I feel like this is a really good um, start and like just like one piece of the puzzle that aims to um, heal our community in that way and it's by no means the only answer but I, I do think that it's a place to start so um yeah thank you for bringing that up because it, it is a racial issue too so let me ask you a question so when are we going to address it i mean Asheville give the homeless people 10 million dollars and here we got uh vets for our community june 10th or whatever nonprofits, and we can't even get Asheville to give us money for this i mean i, I believe the city is going backwards we're giving out this free money to, to help everybody else. But when it's time to help the, our own community, the uh, city council members, they turn it back on. And Richard, maybe you can explain to me, but this ain't making sense. 
You got a lot of people in Asheville that's homeless right now, that's being homeless, but now y'all now y'all want to address the issue now because y'all can benefit off this and it makes the city look good, but the city ain't been looking good. The city has always looked like shit. Asheville been doing bad by their own community from day one. Not only the community, but with the schools. Y'all, y'all letting our kids down. So how how did how did y'all find this ten million dollars to get to this situation? But y'all ain't found no money to fix no other situation. I, I, I can try to answer that. Uh, uh, can I can I jump in on this because I okay. see this is starting to go into a uh, direction um, that that may not be conducive to continuing this meeting. Um, it, to address all of these uh, recommendations that we have on the table. Commissioner Young, I completely hear you and I understand that what you're saying. Um, I do, I would like to bring in that what, what we're doing and what you're talking about are, are um, there's, they're intersectional, but they're two separate things. What the recommendations are doing are creating protections not based in money or anything they're creating protections right uh one is for right now that can be brought in for inclement weather within relation to houseless people and the other one is to protect houseless people especially the chronically houseless people from being uh removed what the money uh is being put into the houseless uh, uh, communities and initiatives by the city of Asheville is something that is a separate issue that we can address in uh, and put forward in maybe a future agenda item. And then I'm, I really am interested in working together in creating recommendations for city council for fair and equitable housing practices, which is something that is within our scope. Uh, as the HRCA does, and it's a statewide uh, thing. And Raleigh, uh, particular, the HRCA in Raleigh, in particular, uh, really does a lot with um, uh, with a fair and equitable housing initiatives in uh, in that way and support. So I believe that we can uh, do this uh, right now, as far as the uh, addressing. Um, inequitable ordinance that target our, uh, one of the most vulnerable populations of the city and then also address the money allocation to a uh, fair and equitable place relating to uh, once again the most one of the most vulnerable demographics of the city as well as um, uh, the people that are, are most impacted by unfair, equitable practices uh, by the city. So I hope that helps a bit in, um, in, 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 in grounding where, where this is and the, um, the basis for these initiatives. And I, you know, I'm, I'm with you on the money, you know, but this is, this is a little bit different. I don't think it's different, but we can move on. I did receive the email from Veronica. I had not seen these uh, before. Um, shall I shall I read the emails or? Um, I believe our, or, our vice chair had his had his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Commissioner Oliver. All is well. Thank you for that. I just wanted to say that Commissioner Young, I completely understand what you're saying. Um, as that population, I think it's oftentimes overlooked that every single human relation issue that arises affects us and we're at the bottom of the barrel. So everything that comes across this board should in some way be in regards to the black population, especially in Asheville, who has acknowledged the wrong that has been done and is still being done today, but it's like, all right, well, we've addressed it and nothing else is really shaking about it. So I do understand your frustration, sir, and I am with you and we will continue to push for this to be on the agenda more often, if not always. Thank you. And 
I can't do the hand raising thing either because it's not on my app either with this situation. But that's where I was coming from. Didn't mean to step over comments. But that's why I keep reiterating, are we just repeating, you know, what we hear and what we see in order to be applicable and rubber stamp something? Or who is this helping? That's where I'm at. But I didn't want to, but I'm glad that Commissioner Young did say, because I always, I know that I'm always viewed as the person who always has adversarial comments or whatever and I ask questions because I think people don't really understand sometimes the full girth of what's going on and most of my background has been political financial and advocacy that's what I do you know mostly that's what I do and I'm very good at what I do so I know how to read financial statements and I know how to go back and read things and when we don't have the information that we need as a board like especially these emails and things that are coming in that we don't know about you can't really in fruition put something out there to people that you don't fully understand yourself. You know, that's that's bad representation. Would you elect somebody like that? Of course not. And these are people's tax dollars at, at play and people who have been marginalized, gentrified, put out, castigated, all these issues. So these are the things that I want our working groups to take into account when they go into these silos, because that's what working groups are. They're silos because you don't have to report. You don't have to report those meetings to the public. You just have them. So nobody in the public has to know about what you said or what you did. And once you do something, you're speaking on behalf of this entire board and saying that we agree with something that we don't. And for me, I don't fully understand how we got here. I do understand how we got here, but I just don't understand, like, how does that help? Um, I know it helps a group of people, and I know it does, and marginalized people can be taken in, and I just don't want to keep marginalizing, marginalized people by rubber stamping things that were, that, you know, people voted on. We need to be uh, very inventive about what we do. We have the opportunity to be very inventive. We can create some things that nobody else has done. And I'm not saying anything. That working group was highly affected. What you said was very great. I just needed to know. And then we're now I'm finding out we have emails coming through. We don't know what's going on. And you cannot make an educated decision about something that you don't know. And that's just my last word on that. And I do agree with Daniel Young and Brandon Oliver as a black person here because it's ten million dollars given to something and nobody gave the black community ten million ever to do anything with. So I'm looking at this from all kinds of views because I have to because I have to always take off my hats and put on other hats, and that's what I'm here for. But I just want us to be very enlightened with what we're dealing with here, and I don't think we get the full uh, girth of what's going on. We we kind of we're jumping out into a sea, and we can't be a castaway. Because you're going to go out into a seat one day, you're not going to be able to roll yourself back from. So I, I, that's that's all I'm, I'm trying to say. Thank you Thank so you. much. You. The, the points are valid. Thank you for sharing those. Uh, these these are I see that there are hands up on, on this topic. Um, the the uh, please understand that these are not mutually exclusive exclusive issues. That that we can uh, the reason that this is coming to head is uh, because. I created a work group for it when 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 it was brought up that what did we want to work on this was a thing I wanted to work on and I worked on it and this is what we've produced with the work and 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 if we want to work on reparations then let's work you know work on reparations with that group and that's and that's totally fine the 10 million dollars is is federal money um that's earmarked for that it's not it's not my personal money that I'm spending on one group versus the other um I'm sorry to be somewhat catty about that but um I absolutely understand the 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 frustration about where is um, where's the funding for the right place. Um, th these are separate issues from what we're dealing. With. What we're trying to do is give people a place to lay down with this recommendation to the city that that they won't be you know lighted in the face and moved moved along. That they have a home that you know a stationary place that they can be um, met and protected. Um, that's what I can say to redirect. Um, I saw uh, C Commissioner Coit, I saw your hand up, but I believe that um, Commissioner Chris had his up first. 
Chris, are you still with us? Veronica, you want to go ahead? Um, so uh, I had a clarifying statement in uh, this this thing that we want to sign as a recommendation and send to city council, uh, in my mind, removing or requesting the removal of the, the ordinance that means people can't sleep at, that says people can't sleep at parks. Uh, it very simply gives one less opportunity to harass someone who... It's like uh, the brake light clinic that a local organization did and re they had this brake light clinic where people come in and they, they get their brake lights changed. And the idea was that if you fix the brake light, it doesn't solve any problems, but it gave one less reason that that person might be pulled over and harassed. So if we remove the, the, the law, the broken law, which is leaving at a, at a public park then that's one less reason that that person might get harassed so we can't solve the problem yet but we're moving one less reason i i don't know if that helps <laughs> uh and the other thing i had was that um i it's something it was based on something that dolores had mentioned and i'm really glad you did because i looked into this since our last meeting uh it's my understanding the way that the law is written the like public meeting laws that actually all of our email communications in between us yes even in the working groups are actually public records so that is something we really need to look into because if we're uh, you it asked about the, or not you, um, you said about the working groups, how, uh, it's not public record. Uh, and that's, I think, uh, I think it's an idea that we've all had, but I looked into it in between our last meeting and now, and I think the, I think the idea that we all have that those are not public record is, is false. I think all of our emails between each other about whatever work we're doing for the HRCA is actually public record. I think it's an interpretation of the law that somebody's misinterpreted. I, I really do respect your opinion on that, but I'm telling you, that's not how the law works here in North Carolina as far as borders and commissions. If it did, we could get away with a lot. I'm telling no, you, that's, that's what not I'm how saying. I think they're public record. I'm, no, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I see, okay, I see where you're going with that now. Yeah, but yeah, I think before before we had been told that that stuff was not public record. Like if we have these conversations between emails, if we don't meet a quorum for us, then they're not public record. But they, I looked into stuff outside of this, and I'm actually pretty sure they are public record. Can we bring Brad into that conversation? Is Brad here? Or anybody no, from here the, tonight. That question, Mr. White, thank you. He's not on the call tonight, but uh, I think the idea was that the working groups would get together and have a conversation as opposed to exchanging emails for that very reason. Um, that because if you are exchanging emails and liberating, I do think that would become a public record. Thank you. Um, and also for uh, clarity, the recommendation item one on the table is uh, was discussed as being a long-term recommendation to give to city council. Um, and then recommendation item two is for something uh, that city council can implement now in relation to climate change uh, that can also uh, be uh, um, expand into um, say somebody loses their home and their home is decimated and and they have to be out on the street and the city of Asheville has an ordinance uh, that says that they have to be cleared out um, in inclement weather or if inclement weather is coming in which essentially launched this working group into effect and inclement weather and climate change doesn't wait for anyone and it's not waiting for anyone and um, and as a human relations issue and perspective it is one that is uh, sees no color lines and is important uh, to everyone because we are all going to be impacted by climate change 
And uh, right now, the people that are um, exposed to inclement weather, uh, unsheltered people, are going to be impacted the most by it. And so that's what's going on with um, Houseless Working Group recommendation item two. Uh, we do have a recommendation on the board in relation to uh, community advocacy uh, to hold accountability for city funds in relation to what had come up for the um, Parks and Recreation putting money into all of the uh, non-parks uh, of color um, and then no money to the uh, parks uh, of color and the town. And so we have an accountability recommendation item up as well. So I would like to uh, move forward with this uh, meeting and invite the opportunity for Susie to read so, out loud uh, houseless working group recommendation item one, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I did read through the five emails six emails and they were all in support for ceasing evictions. Um, just, I, I'm surprised that we didn't see them before now. Um, I'm wondering if, is, uh, if Richard, is there a staff con uh, connection that can help us make sure that we get any other public input or where do we go to get the emails for AVL Human Relations Commission at publicinput.com? Yeah, I think the idea is that we created a shared folder, but it sounds like you all may not be in there. So let me confirm that and make sure we get instructions okay. out of how you all can access that folder. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, so I am reading the recommendation. Um, it needs to be updated according to Commissioner Noyes to shorten the timeline to the end of June. Um, it's we the aforementioned members of the Human Relations Commission of Asheville, henceforth known as HRCA, stand in solidarity with the residents of Asheville and the houseless community affected by inhumane encampment removal, hereby offer a formal recommendation to the Asheville City Council. Uh, we the aforementioned members of HRCA strongly recommend that the Asheville City Council swiftly remove the following ordinances, uh, city codes, articles, city code chapter 12, article three, section 12 through 51 and section 12 through 52, immediately ceasing encampment removals on city property. Um, in addition, the aforementioned members of the HRCA recommend the Asheville City Council redirect ordinance enforcement and federal houseless assistance funds to provide or improve sanitation receptacles at, at known encampment sites. Uh, we, the aforementioned members, recommend these amendments be implemented instead of 60 days from today um, by June 30. 2021, making an update, in order to prevent residents and visitors in and of Asheville from potential and or continued health and public safety issues, and so that we may move forward with good faith efforts supported by the peoples of Asheville, the Buncombe County commissioners and members of Asheville City Council to make the city of Asheville an equitable and more inclusive place for all. Uh, motion to approve. Can I get a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, roll call vote. Commissioner Venable. Um, at this time, let me put my face on camera because I know somebody's going to screenshot this for a media event. So at this time, I am voting really knowing this issue and let me tell you why. It is because we don't, as a board, know exactly what is the fruition. We just now got public comment on things that we didn't all have the ability to see. I am not comfortable as a board recommending to things to city council that is not truly equitable to the people here of Asheville. So let me give you a little point about homelessness. Here in Asheville, black homelessness is not something that is talked about because our people absorb the homelessness of our people. We have black homeless people houseless people. So these issues are not talked about. There was $10 million given to, from city council about this issue. I think that, and just like it was told that that provision was written before city council voted. And I don't want to always be, we don't need as a board to keep rubber stamping something that's already happening. Come up with something new. 
we need to come up with something that really changes the life of people. And I don't think this is it. Um, so with that being said, and that's my ex- explanation for saying no. And um, I got to say no to that because it's not helping people who look like me. Because people who look like me, we have to live with our mothers and our fathers and our, our cousins and our aunts and uncles. You know, we come out of prison. We don't have any. And nobody's talking about that as part of this this issue and I don't believe and we're finding out things on the back end right now in this meeting I just don't feel comfortable so it's a no for me thank you thank you uh Commissioner Chandler yes Commissioner Noyes yes Commissioner Jones I'm going to vote yes, but I want to also acknowledge something here. It's not being said. There's uncertainty about whether or not we should be having subgroups working. There's a, that's a trust issue. We can't be a working group here. We have to divide the work. You have to have subgroups. You have to have working groups. How do you have working groups and, and you trust where they come up with? I don't want to pretend that's not a problem. The other thing about uh, the language uh, since I've been, since the 1960s, we always had words that really meant black, but don't say that. Some people believe inclusion and equity mean taking care of the problems that black people have only. And, and if that's not the case, then we ought to say that's not the case. Uh, so I'm saying there's a lot of unspoken things going on here. But I vote yes, by the way. I don't want to collude with the unspoken things that's going on. Uh, there's a tendency to hear uh, uh, black think that any money comes down, we ought to be given the first shot of it. There's no understanding about what it means that money is earmarked. I don't know if people understand that. There, when money comes down, there's strings attached to it. And sometimes it doesn't include us. It doesn't include black, black people. By the time we hear money's coming, we want to know why aren't we involved? Because of the people that decided to give money, they didn't have us in mind. They did not have black people in mind. That's why we like it. They didn't have us in mind to start with. That money was earmarked for something. As uh, Ms. Chandler, she's working on money that's already earmarked for, for homelessness. That doesn't say anything about black people. So I'm just saying, uh, Tanya, there will be a people being upset and brokenhearted unless we start acknowledging what's really going on in this group. This group. People are going to be disappointed. I mean, the, 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 the rain, I mean, Ms. Bimble doesn't trust what's coming out of this group. But for reasons you conditioned to be that way. Um, I have a concern about what, it, what, what inclusion really means. I still don't know what it means in that sort of Sometimes I think it means black people, sometimes I, I don't think it means black people. I don't know. And I've been in this group since day one. And I'm not blaming anybody, but I don't want to pretend that there are some things that are unspoken in this group. But I vote yes. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Overfelt? Um, I vote yes with the with the caveat that I just want to say that. Um, what Dolores said, and Mr. Davidson said, I think are, are valid points. I'm still a yes, but I, I want to acknowledge that what they bring to the table is valid. Thank you, Commissioner Overfelt. Commissioner Coit? Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Tiffany Flurney Dubolo? I'm going to vote no. Because um, just as it's been mentioned with the concerns, I just feel, you know, out of the loop of recommendations, just constantly coming up with this board. And there's no real transparency as far as being a a full commission. And I just need more clarity. So I vote no. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Tiffany Flurney down below. Uh, Commissioner Weinbrenner. Yes, um, I work, my day job is working for a nonprofit that deals with um, homelessness, houselessness, 
And so I feel like uh, there's a conflict of interest. So I am going to abstain from this vote. Thank you. Hey, you um, last <laughs> the, <laughs> right um, last meeting, um, we went over, and I just uh, want to make sure that you understand that an abstention means yes. No, I don't understand that. Did we go over that? Yeah, it was last. In order. Oh, well, this is Kim. I can just clarify I, that I, there's. Um, you, you can't abstain. You can't abstain from no. a vote. It will be recounted as a yes. However, um, you can be recused if you have personal financial interest. The entirety of the group would have to vote for you to be recused from the vote. I don't have, have personal issues. Um, and since my would be counted as a yes, I'm going to kind of ditto um, my buddy Tiffany and say I would like to have more uh, contemporaneous information on this issue before we actually move to recommend to strike down ordinances. I think the group has done a great job and I agree with them in concept and theory, but I really don't feel that, um, that, I, that I'm, I'm seeing this from a variety of sides. Um, and I wish that, I, I think that maybe we could, um, I'm just gonna have to, I'm, I'm gonna have to vote no. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Weinbrenner. Commissioner Young? No, I'm voting no off. And uh, Vice Chair Oliver? And the group has worked hard, and I do enjoy I, I really do appreciate the work that was put in. I'm not fully aware of so to be to vote yet. I will support the group. And that, um, at this time, I am just not confident. And being able to explain what is going on among the earth, recommending. So if I can have a little more time, I'll read those. Thank you. We do not have quorum. Um, and so uh, that is a no vote on the um, House's recommendation, House's group recommendation item one. Uh, we encourage you to um, maybe go back to the drawing board and um, explore this in a different way. And then maybe we can um, vote on putting it onto a future agenda item where we can have a more open discussion here in the HRCA. Uh, is that okay with you? Is, it, is that directed at me? Yes. Okay. Is the the quorum is is um, do, if we have seventy percent of people present? Is that right? No, it's um, for the commission itself. So we would need nine people, I believe. Oh. So. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. That's yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Chandler. Uh, the second uh, recommendation from the houseless working group is something that we have explored before um, and we did go over in February when it happened with an email that was read out loud uh, with the commission uh, in regards to uh, houseless encampment, encampment removal uh, in the event of inclement weather. And this is solely just to address that so that nobody is moved out of any place for three days prior or three days after inclement weather. Um, uh, Councilwoman Rumini. I wanted to ask a question. Um, the way that I counted the votes just then, it seemed that the motion failed, not that you didn't have a quorum, because it seems that you still have a quorum of this group that can vote, just that the not a majority of folks voted to pass it. Is that correct? 
Yes. Correct. That's what, I, and I also have that um, Chair, Chairwoman Rodriguez did not vote. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, my my vote was a yes vote. If your vote is a yes vote, then we have six yes and five no. Is that is that enough to pass it or not? What we had was uh, some yeses with people who said that they didn't want to vote either way, but they understood. So that lets you know that there's some bad feelings with this. Okay, we have six yes votes and five no votes. Is that enough, enough to pass it? Uh, no, it's not because we still need uh, nine votes to pass. No. We need nine Just people present to vote. You need that you need nine. I'm not... Because our because our uh, commission is sixteen, and no, or do we just need nine? Oh, we just need majority here in this meeting. Well, as long as you have a quorum present to conduct business, you just need a majority vote for it to pass or fail. Okay. If you have a quorum, it's only if you have majority, then the vote would pass. All right. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So we do have majority. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm dark. Like, dark. I'm not sure what's going majority, on with Commissioner so Young. I'm, I'm, I don't consider it. Um, I, I understand what, what the what the five people who are voting no. Um, and I provided this recommendation a week before this meeting so that we could do research and look into it. Is there any more information I can provide you that would make you feel better about the recommendation? Hold, hold please, it's a no Commissioner. For Oh, oh, commission, okay. uh, uh, oh, please, Commissioner Chandler. We did have, we do have majority vote in here right now. We have uh, six to five. And so then so that the would mean that the recommendation, we, pardon me, Commissioner I, I Venable, pardon me, Commissioner the, Venable, point of order. I'm, I'm asking Kim a question. Yeah, since we have, uh, since we have um, majority vote in here, then that would mean that this recommendation uh, would pass. Procedurally, that is correct. All right. Well, then uh, um, I rescind my my uh, previous comment and, uh, and continue forward with uh, putting forth the houseless working group recommendation item one uh, to city council. Uh, to be uh, read aloud in the next city council meeting. Can you make sure our names that voted no will be rescinded from that 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 issue, please? Correct. Absolutely. Uh, moving on, are uh, as are we complete with that, uh, Councilwoman Rooney? Thank you. Uh, houseless group uh, recommendation item two. Uh, in relation to uh, climate change affecting the houseless community of Asheville. Um, we had discussed this, uh, what had happened with the uh, uh, encampment removal that actually went nationwide and put uh, Asheville into a light that was uh, uh, very disheartening with the inhumane way that uh, humans were treated in the event of inclement weather within hours of a 50 mile an hour snowstorm, a houseless encampment removal, thank you, Mr. White. Um, a houseless encampment removal was issued and uh, houseless people were viciously removed from their uh, in, uh, shelter in place encampment uh, before inclement weather. And in, in response to the public outcry that followed that uh, houseless encampment removal, uh, we initiated action uh, here with the HRCA to get to the bottom of what happened. Uh, we reached out to the Civil Rights Division of uh, DOT. We thank you, uh, uh, Councilwoman Rumi. We reached out to the... Um, to the Civil Rights Division of the DOT, who then gave us the name of the person who made that call. And uh, through those findings, we uh, set forth this recommendation. Uh, the recommendation is as follows. 
We, the aforementioned members of the Human Relations Commission of Asheville, henceforth known as HRCA, stand in solidarity with the residents of Asheville, the HRCA Houseless Working Group, and the houseless community affected by inhumane houseless encampment removal proceeding an event of inclement weather that was witnessed worldwide on February 1st, 2021 in the city of Asheville. We, the aforementioned members of the HRCA, hereby offer a formal recommendation to the Asheville City Council. We, the aforementioned members of the HRCA, strongly recommend for the Asheville City Council to swiftly and decisively accept and implement amendments to the following ordinances, City Code Article, City Code Article 1251, introduce and implement subsection D. City Code Chapter 16, Article 1, 16, 1, introduce and implement subsection E. City Code Chapter 16, Article 1, 16, 2, introduce and implement subsection C. City Code Chapter 11, Article 1, Section 1117, introduce and implement subsection C to Asheville City Codes, City Ordinances, Asheville City Codes as follows. This article is prohibited from enforcement in the event of inclement weather, three days prior to inclement weather, and three days after inclement weather. Inclement weather is defined as the existence of rain or abnormal climatic conditions, whether they be those of hail, snow, cold, high wind, severe dust storm, extreme high temperatures, or the like, by virtue of which it is either unsafe or unreasonable for unhoused individuals to be exposed to this weather by way of encampment removal. We, the aforementioned members of the HRCA, recommend these amendments be implemented no later than 30 days from today in order to prevent residents and visitors in and of Asheville from potential and or continued health and public safety issues so that we may all move forward with good faith efforts supported by the peoples of Asheville, the Buncombe County Commissioners, and members of the Asheville City Council to make the city of Asheville an equitable and more inclusive place for all. Motion on the table, can I get a second? Second. Are we gonna have discussion or questions regarding this issue? Um, if you like, uh, we have, I have uh, one staff. Specific. Okay, go ahead. I've got, okay. sorry, I've got one very specific question about this. Um, Susie, did you, did you work on how this interfaces with the code purple that they do for the city when there is inclement weather? How does this work in, in relationship to that or does it? This this particular um, Article Two Amendment is in conjunction with that uh, because not, because when there is a code purple you know, because it's below freezing, not everyone um, makes it into a, a shelter for the evening. So it is in conjunction with those. It doesn't suit usurp it. Thank you. I can't raise my hand, excuse me for interjecting again, but I feel some type of way because I didn't hear about marginalized people. All I heard was we're taking care of marginalized by Senate. I get so tired of people <laughs> talking to people who are marginalized. When you're marginalized, you don't talk to people. You go out here and you solve their problems. You get rid of them. So if our board is going to only rubber stamp something that does nothing, what is the whole purpose of us at the end of the day? I don't want to keep talking about how to keep people marginalized because that's what we're doing. What we're doing is saying, let's rubber stamp events and anybody else who's been part of this process all these times and they've been giving all this money and what have they solved? What have they solved here in Asheville? There's a lot of people out here on our board who are self-vested interests. We have got to stop this. Thank this you, is Commissioner Venable. Uh, no, 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 Thank no. You, you cannot much, cut me off. I'm not point, done. Point of, point point of, of order. order is, point of order is our board point. was relegated to a certain task. And until those tasks are made, all our board is doing is being corrupt. No, uh, point of order. Okay, point of order, please, Commissioner yeah. Venable. I would like to put this to a vote. Um, this is a, a human relations commission. This is well within the scope. Uh, 
we have the motion is on the table. The, t the motion has been seconded. Uh, uh, a housing uh, working group, houseless working group recommendation item two. Um, roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Venable, yay or nay? No, absolutely no at this point because I have no information about anything that's going on here. No. Thank you. No. Thank you, Commissioner Chandler. Uh, I'm about me and you go to this voice club. Yes. This thing is romance thing on tonight, girl. Commissioner Noyes? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Well, um, here's my observation here. Um, and the Lord is saying that um, we are redundant. Are we redundant? Now. Thank you, Commissioner. We're redundant here. We are, we're doing work that other people are doing or should be doing. We're not, we're not cutting any new ground here. We're not. Sorry. I'm not doing this shit. No, fuck you. No. My answer is no. Stand up. Be a no. Um, I hardly think that protecting people in the event of inclement weather is redundant or needs Bitch, to be. I do your white shit. I ain't here for that. I'm not Pardon here for me? that. I'm a real bitch. Can you please repeat what you just said? Because I didn't understand it. Who are you talking to? Commissioner Venable. Okay. Commissioner Jones. Um, well, I, I, I said redundant. Okay. Boy, it's people man. in Nashville Get this. Get this. that have been working on Get what do you do when it's real cold outside? What do you do with homeless people? There are people that know how to do that. There are people that know where to go if they need help to do that. I'm saying we're being redundant. The things that's already happening in Nashville. I, 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 I said before, before we do, before we do anything, the oh first question we should ask is who else is doing it? I don't have my mic on. Why is my mic on? I don't get it. Don't anyway. I'm not voting anymore today. So you say I'm not here. Just say I'm not here. I'm, I'm not voting anymore. Because we're pretending something. The other thing we got here, we got a racial divide in this group. It's very obvious to me. I'm a black man, and I see a racial divide here. Because we're not clear about what does it mean when you say equity and inclusion in the black community. They hear one thing, and we're acting in a different, different sort of way. So I'm not voting anymore today. I'm not here. Excuse me. This is uh, Christina Harris. Um, I would just like to um, speak up a little bit here um, that if, you know, language is going to be used that, you know, can be taken in the wrong light, we, I will mute you. So I would like for everyone to have a um, mutual respect while we kind of discuss these really difficult topics. Um, so please, if, if you have any questions, put them in the comment. I'm very happy to address those, but I would like this uh, meeting to stay, <laughs> you know. I would just like everyone to uh, work through this. I know it's very difficult, um, not overshadowing that at all, but I would greatly appreciate that. Is there any questions? Thank you very much, uh, Christina. For All saying right. that. Thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, Commissioner Jones, um, because uh, there is a no vote, that equates as an abstention, which is a yes vote. I didn't explain. I said, I left the meeting. Okay. Um, Okay, thank you. 
Commissioner Overfelt? Yes. Commissioner Coit? Yes. Commissioner Tiffany Flurney Double No. Commissioner Young? I'm voting no until I get some uh, further understanding what we voting on. I mean, cause I, I I don't understand this. Can somebody tell me what 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 are we trying to pass? We're voting on uh, the the pro the prevention of encampment removal in the event of inclement weather. So if it's going to be a big fifty mile an hour snowstorm, uh, to not move the houseless people or anybody that is put out on the street for circumstances beyond their control. Nah, not at this, at this time. I'm not, I'm voting no still. Okay. And uh, Commissioner Weinbrenner? Yes. And myself, uh, yes. And that is a majority vote. Um, motion uh, passed. And thank you all for your participation and willingness to discuss these difficult subjects with such candor and honesty. Um, chair vote? Commissioner no. Oliver? I don't know. I didn't hear. Commissioner Oliver is not in the room. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we do have uh, one more recommendation on the table with uh, Commissioner Young um, in regards to uh, community advocacy um, relating to <coughs> accountability for the um, uh, refurbishing of the Martin Luther King Community Center. Um, and a list of items that need to be refurbished for the uh, Martin Luther King Community Center. Commissioner Young, would you like to expand on that? Uh, yes, uh, I would like this removed from this uh, from the committee. The community is already taking care of this, and this is on us. Okay. Uh, so move. Uh, and I'm sorry, David, I don't, I, I don't understand what you mean by that. Can you explain that a little bit? Commissioner, you? Commissioner Young, please. His name is not David, his name is Daniel. What oh, I mean I'm so is, sorry, the, it cuts off my, I'm so sorry, Daniel, this, it cuts off your name and my camera. Or this screen. is what I, what I meant. This is a community problem for the black community, and we are handling this. So, I mean, we're, we're welcome for any outside help or whatever. But right now, I think that we got this under control, and it's not up for a, de a debate with the uh, commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Young. Um, Richard White has left the meeting, uh, so there is no update for progress of Director uh, for Equity and Inclusion, um, nor is uh, he bringing community concerns and updates. Uh, unfinished business, uh, Commissioner Quaid. Uh Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I'm clear on this. The thing that we were supposed to vote on just now was for the city to fund repairing of the park or community center. And now we're, we're not going to vote on that because... I still I don't understand why we're not going to vote on that. It seems like a good idea to tell the city to fund, um, you know, help, uh, ref fixing up a community center. Well, let me speak on this so everybody can get understanding. I reached out to the Martin Luther King uh, Committee. They are helping with this situation. The city has helped, so we we already have have fixed this problem. The community is in a, uh, engaging and helping also. So I feel that th uh, this situation has already been addressed and has been is working on. So I mean, are there any other similar 
um, community centers that could use this kind of funding other than the Martin Luther King one? It's a lot more community centers that can use it. The uh, Memorial Park uh, Center that's used for the black community for football games, for the youth need to be restored. And the city, the city knows this. So it's not like uh, the city I'd is not aware of Yeah, I'd love to help. I'd love to vote on pushing the city to do to do just that. I'd love to vote on that. Well, let's vote. I mean, uh, if we're going to vote, Parts and Recreation got that $100,000 and nothing came towards us. So is the, is the city is aware of that. What is the city much going to do about this? When they doing yeah, back, great. they doing behind the doors meetings without the black community involved. It's the same stuff we're dealing with now. Well, this is the the reason for this recommendation is to hold the city accountable. So when we provide recommendations like this to the city, then it's on public record that um, we see what they're doing and they're not going to get away with it. And so that's how we can use these recommendations with the HRCA to hold the city accountable for an equitable um, policy and practices. We can also acknowledge that the city has done this and not necessarily thank them because they should have done it anyway, but we can acknowledge that they've done it and, and suggest they continue to do this in black yeah. communities. And then we can get more information about what needs to happen for refurbishment. And then we can have a we can have dialogues about that potentially. I agree with Thoughts? Chris. And I understand that uh, Commissioner Young um, wants to pull the recommendation off the table at this time and then revisit how we could hold the city accountable for other parts that's been neglected. But right now at this time, the city has stepped up to support those specific efforts with the MLK part. So I agree with um, what Commissioner Weinbrenner has, has just suggested that we continue the conversation, um, but we move forward at this time. I'll be glad to draft a letter and present it to you guys. Um, and we can words, I can wordsmith it and um, Daniel, if you don't mind, I'll get with you. And is if I can email you and get some more information, that would be great. Thank you very much, Commissioner Weinbrenner. I um, appreciate those words. Uh, Commissioner Young, would you like to respond? Yeah, uh, I appreciate everybody's support. Uh, Whatever we can do, I'm with it. Uh, you got my information, call me, email me, or whatever. Let's get, get whatever needs to be done. I'll email you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I got one more question to ask. How do we address the uh, committee that allowed this to happen? Because it, went, it wasn't just the city. It was the people that's on the same committee as us. If they're allowing this to happen, they... For me, it seemed like it was uh, it was intentional. It wasn't something that they wasn't aware. It's something that they that they did intentionally. I sit in on the meeting. I asked questions multiple times, and each time I asked, was any of this money going to the black community? It was like I was being singled out. I asked again, just for the record, and uh, they sent me a link and like, here, you go file for it yourself. And if that's what we're doing as a community as a committee, they don't need to be there. They don't need to be there. I mean, I think it's wrong. Thank you, Commissioner Young. Um, I think it might be also important to put into, um, for public record, that these meetings aren't available, widely available for us to go to and to make sure that uh, people are able to be held accountable for uh, inequitable uh, practices and discussions. Um, and and uh, you know, as, as 
as I said, nothing, nothing about us without us. And if these meetings are happening without the people that are most impacted and involved, then that's something that we really need to take a look at and, um, and handle. Commissioner uh, Tiffany Flurney Debla. Well, honestly, uh, Commissioner Coit had her hand up first, and then I can go. But it is in relation to this particular subject. You you can go in first. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to add and say that I actually sat on the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee years ago, and it's just underrepresentation. So anyone you know here can always just attend, especially since all meetings now are virtual. We can always sit at it used to be around six o'clock every second Tuesday, but it may have changed. But I would recommend that um, we kind of do that, especially if we want to begin to hold individuals accountable and certain committees and certain boards, we should observe more of what they're doing and also read, read up on some of their minutes. Uh, is this pertaining to a particular work group, Commissioner Young? Uh, yes, it's contain uh, parts and recreation. Uh, I just, I mean, I got on the group, just was listening to the stuff. Okay. And I seen like a week after they they making upgrades for the uh, Lake Julian, yeah. Powell Creek uh, Library, and some more uh, parks and recreations. And I think all the money that they got, some of that could be uh, used for our community centers. We that's a great subject. I mean, that's just great subject matter. And I want to join in with Chris to join in with you to go and take the next steps further outside of this conversation. But I appreciate the dialogue. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank I you. know we get cut off. But let me tell you something. I don't even know how people even got access I, I to believe that. I believe Commissioner Coit was next. Uh, Commissioner Venable, Venable, please. Thank you. After that, may I please get, because I don't even have access to be able to speak here. Absolutely. Uh, I just, um, I wanted to thank Mr. Young. Uh, I think you're bringing up something that absolutely needs to be discussed because uh, we can apply this, um, not the city not spending money specifically in black communities. We can apply this to many other things, including the school. Um, the schools not having work done to them is uh, one of the reasons that the city wants to shut that one down. And it really seems like we have another situation where the city's chosen not to spend money in the black community. So thank you, Mr. Young, for bringing this up. And I, I think this is something we'll be able to apply to lots of other areas. Thank you, Commissioner, Qu Commissioner Venable. So let me just say something, because I can't even control what's going on media-wise with this situation. I'm getting put on mics that I did not uh, hear to, so I just want to say something. I don't care what people heard, because anything that people heard, I meant that. Let me tell you something. As a black person here in Asheville that grew up here eight generations in, I see what's going on. I see this whole dynamic. And every time my people are being ignored, disillusioned, told lies, don't know what's going on, no community involvement, all these strikes against us, and then we're put on boards to say what? Go do this for the people who think they know what's good for you. These are the things that I advocate against, and I don't care what people heard, because you know what? And I'm glad that ain't, they're right. I, sh I didn't even know I was on a mic at that time because I didn't have a mic. I couldn't even raise my hand. So that's being said, I don't even know what's going on because I'm very, I mean, people know what happened with me with the police department. I don't even know what be following me sometimes and how media gets overtaken. That's why I, I'm part of say no to social media, because if you get on social media, you will be, you can be manipulated. We see that with the gas companies. So you can't do everything with everybody, but just know one thing. And yeah, if you heard me say it, I probably did. Excuse me. But what I'm trying to say to y'all is this. As a board, you have more opportunities to solve people's problems than anything. If you don't solve people's problems where they're at, you're not going to solve them in other places. This board is supposed to solve people's problems where they're at. We're not talking about the future. 
We're talking about right now, where they're at. I have fought for so long, and I've been the old, one of the oldest moves outside of Davidson Jones and Chris Weinberger on this board. I just got reappointed. And I said what I said, didn't even know. And this is talking about the constructs of how these things work. I don't want to meet in, in, in virtual realities because we all should have been vaccinated now as part of a co- community that is equitable because you want to save people's lives. So I want to have no more of these virtual meetings. I want to come see you face to face so people can see what I'm saying outside of some dynamic I can't control. These are things that are marginalized people issues. Everybody don't know how to work a computer or how to access the hands raised and all these crazy things. And as a board, we should not be conducive in that measure. We should be the people going out here, talking to people, doing the work, doing all of this. Instead, what we're doing is prophesizing people's intentions. That's not what we were put here for. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner Venable. We appreciate um, what you're saying. We do need to continue on with the meeting um, and continue on to uh, unfinished business. Um, and uh, the next item up on unfinished business is to oh, discuss uh, or vote a potential meeting time change to two hours. Um, it looks like we have gone over quite some time and it looks like we do need that extra amount of time so people can be heard and we can get through the meeting in a timely fashion. Um, And so uh, is there any discussion on a potential meeting time change from an hour and a half to two hours? Chairwoman Rodriguez, may I? Would that be... Either, either one of you. Looking at adding, are you looking at add time? Are you looking at starting at five and ending at seven? Or are you looking at going till eight from 530? Uh, I remember when we were meeting live in or right in the beginning, we were we were going till about eight o'clock um, in the first year and such. And so we um i just wanted to bring that back because somehow it got cut to 7:30 and um we used to go longer in the live meetings and i was just uh, wondering if we can get back to that if i could say uh, we we didn't go over our meetings when we were live i mean i i can't remember one meeting where we ended at 8 p.m unless we just kind of continued on in the space after we adjourned. But I I do say, I I like the idea of two hours, but my thing is um, I'm solutions oriented. So I need the meetings to be productive. Um, I don't want to feel like I'm sideswiped with new information that I am uh, encouraged to vote on without any type of background information or conversation. So if we do agree to go to two hours, um, could we also discuss ways in which we're going to keep each other abreast and communicate it prior to a vote um, at, at a meeting and or recommendation? Absolutely. I um, That's one of the reasons why I wanted to open up the meeting time. So we do have an ample time to discuss and do have uh, the opportunity to really get into the deeper issues that are coming up uh, in the meeting. And, you know, if we need to do it publicly, we do it publicly. Um, So um, I think that's important. Um, And that goes back to the working group uh, thing where uh, we cannot work and function effectively as a commission without working groups. It is ineffective to bring every single issue to the group and then discuss it and determine it and do all of the things. Uh, what working groups function as are specific um, issues and solution-oriented groups of people 
that can bring that information into the Human Relations Commission. So I would like to challenge the narrative that working groups are operating in secret when at any time anybody can email anybody that's in lead of a working group and go, hey, can I sit in in your next meeting? I want to know what's going on because all of the working groups are open to all of us. It's a collaboration and we're here to work on a team. And if we're not working as a team for the all of the city of Asheville, then it's just us and we're not here for justice. And that is, that is taking... Um, out of alignment what human relations really are. And so I, I, I hear you and I get it. And I think that it's important to make that distinction of um, making sure that we're our working groups do work together effectively and efficiently. So we as a commission can work together effectively and efficiently and address the issues that come to us so that we can recommend them to city council so that we can hold the city and the city government accountable for all of the things that we've been discussing this whole meeting. So I think that yeah. that is um, an important thing to bring up. And, and I'm, I'm passionate about making sure that we work together as a cohesive group uh, with respect to the working groups that are doing the work so that right. we all don't have to. You and know? thank you for that clarification, uh, Chairwoman. Um, so that's just a great idea. When each working group, right, they're designed because it's not a quorum. Something that is really cool that we can also implement is that one person from a work group can just communicate to the other HRCA members because that's still not going to be a quorum. Maybe that's too much. I don't know. But I just I don't want to feel like, you know, I don't trust the working groups. But there's still a level of mistrust and distrust within our community and within us collectively. So I just thank you for naming it. Thank you. I appreciate that. May, Commissioner, Chairwoman Maya. Please, Commissioner. I, I have I have two questions around that. Um, because it's my understanding that we are not able those specific instructions to not email everyone the information that we have because that could be considered a quorum and it becomes public information. How do we communicate this in advance? When I sent out this recommendation a week in advance for people to review and do research and look for what they wanted to know about it, I specifically used the instruction that I was given that we cannot communicate about it by email or otherwise. What else can we do um, outside of working group for the whole commission without violating that sunshine clause? And my second thing is, is there anybody else who wants to get on the working group? We have like four members. We can hold three more. Anybody else want to get on the? You really cannot. That's the thing that I'll be talking to y'all about. You cannot go out here and then you form these working groups. Everybody get these working groups and then they send something to us as a board and act like we're supposed to rubber stamp it just because whatever in that working group agreed with it. Not at all, Dolores. Not at all. Would you like to join the working group? No, I would not. Because I'm going to tell you why. Because I know that working group has nothing to do with people who look like me. That's what I'm telling you. So if we're talking about being a human relations commission, you cannot go out here and subjugate one group of people and then expect taxpayers and city council to sit up here and acknowledge that. Commissioner Weinbrenner? One thing that I found helpful with our community engagement work group is we, um, I basically took minutes and I submitted them to Tanya and to Brandon. So the information on that work group lives with our chair and our co-chair. And I, I'm assuming at one point it'll be uploaded into our shared documents, Tanya, is that correct? Absolutely. Anything that we um, want to be put in uh, to put in public record will be put on the city website. And so minutes, documents, everything that we want to make sure that everybody knows um, it will be put into the city uh, website for review. Is Commissioner Noya I'm, I'm still very here? sensitive. I'm very sensitive about also giving receipts to people when I present them with information. So I think that we need to to print people with information 
And I think that if I don't want to speak for everybody, but I think that a lot of people, I think you did a good job in bringing forth recommendations, but I think that a lot of people are connected and I think that it kind of, it kind of blindsided a lot of people, different people in our commission have different, um, different things going in their lives and not everybody is able to really, just because you send, and I'm not being critical of you. I'm just letting you know, just because you send it out doesn't necessarily mean that people might have the time to look up the exact statutes and clauses and things like that. It's, it's an unfortunate truth. So some things do need to be, some information does need to be conveyed in these meetings. And I think with something as big as recommendations to city council, I think that there should be a buildup to that. We fast tracked the recommendation to um, for the city council to uphold the Vance Monument Task Force. That recommendation got fast tracked because it was time sensitive, and I know that other issues are time sensitive. But I feel like the commission needs on the big stuff. I think that it needs to be built. We need to build up to it, and that way, if there are issues at the base. We can go ahead and discuss it before all the work is done and the recommendations are ready to be made. Does that make any sense to anybody? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Chairwoman uh, Rodriguez, we can't hear you. There's something going with your computer. Mm. Well, Chairwoman continues to work on her audio. Should we continue to move down on the agenda? Okay. I was wondering about extending the meeting length if we had, um, instead of extending it like you were suggesting, Commissioner Devolo, uh, to be productive in the time that we do spend. Oh, how do we get to that shared folder? We have all these notes from all these interviews that we had and and are happy to share them. I thought we had, um, but it's so, sorry, side point. Um, but is, is there a, a way that we can structure the meeting so that when we have an item, if we're able to see each other's notes from work groups or whatever is going on before, we come to the meeting with, um, you know, that information or questions in mind, discuss them um, in the meeting and have a vote that maybe is, I mean, definitely a piece of white supremacy culture, but to have like times that we flow through stuff as a, or just leave it open. Is there a middle ground? Anybody got anything on that? I agree. I'm, I'm open to whatever works, honestly. And um, when I say productive, I just mean, you know, in harmony with one, one another because there's gonna be hard conversations and um, we should be able to work through that. I also have something to say on that issue because I'm always put in a position where I'm always the evil one or whatever the one that always do something. And I say no because I know what it's like to be here because I am from here. 
So don't ever get discouraged because I say no. I say no because if you don't know what you're talking about, why should I jump on your board? Why should I jump on your bandwagon if you're talking about people who look like me and you're not giving any type of equity to? We're left out of the conversation over and over again. And here I am as a board member on a commission that city council put me on for a reason, just got reappointed for the third time. I'm one of the old school members. We got put here for a reason. And we didn't go gangster. Are you addressing me directly? Why you should be on my work group? No, I'm I have not answering that. Because if I was addressing you to you, I would say your name, Susie. I didn't say your name. I just said I'm not here to rubber stamp the the uh, the, the, the the total deliberation of keeping black people and black communities out of conversations. This is what I do. I don't make a living off of it. I do this because I care, because I've been affected. And I see my family affected. I see my friends affected. I see people here affected. So I have no vested interest because I don't make a dime off of this. You don't see no nonprofits up here with my name on it and I'm ringing bells talking about we just reached a, a, a milestone. That's so I was going to ask you a question and it, it is pertaining to what you're saying. And also, like, do you think that us extending the meeting to two hours, like, we could get a little more work done collectively. No, because we don't get work done. And I, you cannot put black people suffering in two hours, an hour and a half, and no other type of hours. So I do feel that what we're doing here is just basically rubber stamping something. And we're going back just like we did with that homeless initiative, rubber stamping something that council already gave 10 mil to. Who gave us 10 mil? Whoever gave us 10 million, they said $1.2 million. And you know what? That's a real talk because nobody nowhere gave nobody in the state of North Carolina $1.2 million for reparations. They did do that too. So if you're going to be on this board, you need to be very equitable and educational about what you're talking about because you ain't going to come to me talking all kinds of crazy and think I'm going to rubber stamp it because I know better. This is what I do. This is I what I do. I sis, for real. And I mean, I know you haven't said this and I know we're going to move on, but I'd love to sit on your work group Dolores, and I would love I get one. But you know what? All people say is all she's I'm guilty of be just being a no. And you know, I hope people heard what I said because I didn't even put my stuff on whatever. I don't even I can't even control what's going on right now, but I'm glad because it goes to show that I'm not what people say I am. I'm gonna always do what's right because I have to sleep here. One day I gotta get buried in this city. My daddy just got buried. My husband. My daddy and my husband died within 10 days of each other. You know what I'm saying? I got to still rock. My mama's still here. I got to rock this out. Because if I don't rock it out for my family, they're going to keep getting this generational harm. I'm not here for that. That's not what I'm here for. Okay, Dolores, can I ask your question? Dolores? Yes, sir. I, uh, I don't like to say I feel you, but I do. Um, and Dolores, I haven't spent a lot of time with you. I care about you. You could be my daughter. You're that young. Um, let me ask you something. Can we yes, be sir. doing anything on this committee that's, that does not involve black people in Nashville? Say that one more time so I can make sure I can answer your question equitably and, and really if, educationally. If we're doing something in this group that's not involved black people in Nashville, yes, sir. Is that something we should state not do? Stay not one more time. Are you saying that everything we do here is to involve black people in Nashville? Mm hmm I think what's going on here is that people are using black bodies to be able to engage themselves in situations and money situations. Because I do know that one thing is that this board had a vested interest. So everybody who was put on this board from the beginning, when we came on it, we had vested interest in this community, but people were brought in who had vested interest outside of community. And I get tired of rubber stamping things that don't talk about black people. You know, we're talking about a, a whole community. And when you're talking about sy systemic racism, black people were left out of the Constitution. So how do you think that we are being folded into any of these conversations? Because we're not. We're not. So here's what I, I want to do. 
Because I want to be where you want to be. I want to be in a place where I trust everybody on this committee. I want to learn how to do that. And we have some opportunities, and this is where this board needs to be more contingent at. Your job is not to go rubber stamp people. Your job is to bring people into the fold. You need to do community engagement. Will you work with me on trying to learn how to be trustful of this group? I absolutely would, Mr. Davidson, because you've seen that I have been the one person, and you know that for yourself, I've always been, if there's something going wrong, I'm going to tell you where it's wrong at. And there's some people on this board right now who have done some things, and I can't even get into it because it's their personal proprietary situations. But this is what I'm talking about with this board. And I have an issue with it because I see people, personal proprietary issues being launched against people being able to live here. And this is not a board meant of black. This is about a human relations council. Will you join me on a working group? You and I start a working group. Work on that yes, issue. sir. I'll be willing to do that. Okay. I signed up for that. Okay. Thank you. I'll be willing to do that. And excuse, and please make sure and I just want to say this again. I do not make apologies for my stances. I don't make apologies for what I say because I can't. Because I'm out here every day doing the work that nobody else do. They get paid for. They get paid. We'll talk about that too. We'll talk about that. So I will send this back over to whatever board is here still because I hope people see this and I don't care what people say about me because I'm not I, here for I care what they say about me. It's all good. You know for yourself, sir, I'm a real soldier. I do. I, I, care, what yeah. they, I care what they say about me. I always keep it 100, regardless okay. of what. I just got real funny for a reason. And I get, I didn't, couldn't even control my, I didn't want to say, but I'm glad people did hear that because they heard the truth. So, uh, Madam Chairman, we have a working group about, about trust. We'll call it trust building. For lack of a better term. All right. Uh, trust working group? Yeah. So, divorce, I'll send you my contact information. Okay. Would anybody uh, like to join the. I'm excluded because nobody sends me emails about anything. I find out at the last minute, and this is why I have to respond the way I do because nobody sends me anything until the last minute. I have gotten everything at the last minute. Nobody tells me anything. So, this is, yes, I, I would definitely appreciate that. Okay. And uh, uh, so, um, thank you very much. Uh, we like to vote on a potential meeting time change for two hours. Um, uh, motion on the table. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call vote. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Noyes. Yes. Commissioner Venable. Um, no, because I'm not going to devote no more time than I have to. Nobody's paying me. The ABC board gets paid. The Water Authority. And all we do is make recommendations. So I'm not willing to just waste no more time on my months like this. So let's just keep it where it's at. It works for every other board. So let's just keep it where it's at. We don't get paid for this. And if you really want to be here, you just volunteer your time because you care about people. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Chandler? Um, I have a toddler and a pregnant wife. I'm going to go with no. Uh, Commissioner Overfelt? No. Commissioner Jones? I said I wouldn't vote anymore. So okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Coit? I'm not going to vote no, but honestly, we're rolling into two and almost two and a half hours at this right. point anyway, so, I, but I'd still like to vote no. Okay. Got it. Commissioner Weinbrenner?
Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. I'm going to vote no, but with the caveat that I feel like everybody should be in work groups. I don't think that they're exclusionary and they help us have these meetings a lot more succinctly and stay focused. So my vote is a no, but I'm thumbs up for work groups. Thank you, Commissioner Weinbrenner. Uh, Commissioner Tiffany Flurney Double I vote yes. And Commissioner Young? I vote no until the next meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I vote yes. Uh, motion denied. Um, we will uh, uh, move to adjourn uh, since we've um, I've gone Second. over. <laughs> gone over for two and a, uh, two and a half hours now. Um, and we'll table the rest of the agenda. Um, motion to uh, begin next uh, HRCA agenda uh, uh, from where we left off uh, today. Second. So there's two motions on the table. So uh, seconded for motion to pick up agenda from where we left off today, next meeting. Seconded by Commissioner Chandler. Roll call vote. Commissioner Noyes. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Venable. Oh, it says majority vote. Yes. Commissioner Venable to pick up the uh, agenda. Yeah. Pardon? To table this issue, yes. To table, yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Chandler. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Overfelt. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Commissioner Coit? Yes. Commissioner Weinbrenner? Yes, and thanks to all of you for sticking this meeting out. It's been a long one. Commissioner Tiffany Flurney Double Yes, and for the record, you can just call me Commissioner Double Okay. Just like yeah. <laughs> Great meeting, everyone. Great meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Um, no more voting. <laughs> <laughs> no more yes. voting. All right. Um, and that is majority vote. Uh, yes. Uh, we will be picking up the agenda next uh, from where we left off for next meeting and motion to adjourn. Can I get a second? Second. second. Roll call vote. Commissioner Noyes. Sorry, yes. Adjourn on the table. Commissioner Venable. I was done at 720, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Chandler. Yes. Commissioner Overfelt. Yep. Commissioner Coit. Yes. Commissioner Weinbrenner. Please. Commissioner Tebelo. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Jones. Oh, all right. That was just one more roll call vote just for good measure. Thank you very much, all of you, for being here. Uh, I love, I love um, the way all of you show up in all the capacities. Um, we'll see you uh, next month, and we hope for public comment to be here and have an option for that as well. So um, be kind to each other, do good things, and um, we'll see you next meeting. Thank you.